the charge on the blood and this is uh, the main charge of city so it was built due to uh, imperator's family it was killed Indeed, in 1918, Tsar Nicholas II and his family were executed on the spot where the Church on the Blood now stands. Following the 1917 Russian Revolution and the ensuing civil war between Vladimir Lenin's Red Army and the anti-communist White Army, the Tsar and his family were imprisoned by Lenin in faraway Yekaterinburg due to the fear that they would be a rallying point for public support. With the White Army advancing, secret orders were given to execute the family. Taken to the basement, Tsar Nicholas and his wife Alexandra died immediately by gunshot. But as if by miracle, the bullets did not penetrate the children. The executioners then used their bayonets, but this was also unsuccessful, because what they didn't know was that the children were secretly carrying diamonds sewn into their clothes. Finally, with gunshots to the head, Russia's royal family were no more, and the bodies were immediately taken to the forest in the area called Ganinayama. This is the place. Ah. Groped and looted, the naked bodies of the royal family were thrown into a pit where they were soaked in acid and set on fire to disfigure them beyond recognition. A few days later, an official statement declared that by the order of local leaders, the Tsar had been executed, but the family had been sent to a safe place. It would be eight years later in 1926 that the Soviet government would admit that the family were also murdered. There then came a clampdown on any discussion regarding the deaths, including demolishing the house where they were executed to discourage people paying pilgrimage to the Tsar. And it wasn't until the end of the Soviet Union in 1989 that the murders were discussed openly. In 2000, the Russian Orthodox Church made the family saints. The Church on the Blood was built in their memory, as was the Ganina Yama Monastery. Today, 100 years after the event, it is still a delicate matter as the new national narrative of the now saintly Tsar Nicholas II jars with the father of communism, who by varied accounts ordered his death. The worshipping of these opposing figures highlights the complexity in history that Russia faces today.